All right, I'm Paul Howe, Combat Shooting and Tactics, the owner, lead instructor here. And I want to show you some targets made by LE Targets. And I also want to take the time to thank LE Targets for producing my targets. I'm going to start here, move down from my rifle targets, and actually, general purpose, I want to give you an idea how I actually use the targets. So if you're out there in the community buying targets, you know why you're buying, what you're buying, and how to use them. Now, this is my long distance target. I purchased it first to actually give me a hard reference point right here, a black-white relationship for long distance and zeros. So normally what I do, the primary purpose is, I use these dots, I'll start here, get my seven yard line of sight, line of bore, make sure I'm on paper, then I'll move back here to get a hard zero. I can either put my front sight, tip of my front sight right here, or if I'm using a dot optic, put the tip of my dot right here, and what I want to do, I use a hundred yard zero. Where the dot meets the tip of the front sight, I want the bullet to strike right there. So this gives me a good, clean relationship to get a very hard zero with that weapon system. So again, zero target. The other thing I can use this target for is long distance. When I say long distance, if I go 200 yards, 300 yards, it makes it easier, this contrast, to see, and then I can actually aim at the same spot and see my bullet drop. But it gives my eye a good black-white relationship, which is we want to not strain our eyes out trying to see a target. So. I can also use this at 25 yard pistol. When I say 25 yard pistol, what I can do is aim right here with my front sight. I can see how high the gun's shooting up or down because I want to be able to hit high thoracic and that's what I'm actually trying to get the bullet to enter into and break up as, as much of the bad or the good organs actually as we can. So we take this box and we move it. We've got our hard zero, then we move next door. Now this is my actually qualification target for pistol, rifle, instructor courses. What I've done is taken away the black and I've made it just a slight outline here. Now, for scoring purposes, you break the line, it's the next higher value, I use the NRA rules. But this is a spine box, and my theory on this is if you break the spine, people can't stand up. The other thing is, I want you to have an accuracy and time standard. So, we go accuracy first always. If you're shooting this, and you push it outside the box, I want you to slow down to keep it inside the box. It's a self-paced target, which means I'd rather have you go a little slower and be accurate than to push it outside into a non-vital area. So we use this as a, a personal bandwidth there. So when we shoot, you break the line, it's the next higher value. It also replicates the spine. So again, spinal shots is what we're looking for. And then the head, I shrunk the head box down. There's a lot of good stuff up in here. So the head box has got to be inside here. The pacey that we just use for different things, uh, sighting or precision work. But this target I use on pistol standards, rifle standards, and sniper standards also. It's, it's a very clean target, very simple. The reason the color is the way it is is so I can use masking tape. What I say is uh, masking tape, people go, why? Well, if you know in the business, a box of pasties is about eight bucks. I can get a roll of masking tape for about a buck and a half, uh, and it'll work just fine on this a lot cheaper. So when you start thinking about product and, and class supplies, it'll cut them down. So great target here. Uh, this is my standard CSAT qualification target. The next target in the day, we used to stack three different bulls. This is the SR-21 Center, Service Rifle 21 Center. And what these bulls were, I can do a lot of different drills for diagnostics or just fun shooting. For example, a lot of people do a six o'clock hold. What we do is we can aim right here and either hit where the bullet, uh, where the sight's cut, or we can make it hit center. Both ways work. But this gives a good, easy, black-white relationship for your eye to see. Now with this, we have three bulls. A lot of different drills we can do here. If I'm working at 25, what I can do is I can do standing position here. I can do holster position here. I can do kneeling position. I can do diagnostics on this target. When I say diagnostics, I can shoot one bull a certain way when I'm, uh, say, kneeling. I can change a little bit, shoot this bull a certain way. Change the body position, shoot this bull a certain way. Now I have three targets, and I can say, which gave me the tightest group? So there's a lot of ways to use this target, very simple. Uh, if I'm doing my running drill, I can run up, I can shoot 100, this one. I can shoot kneeling, kneeling with this one. I can shoot standing on this one. If I get up close, I can shoot a pasty, and I can remember my line of sight, line of bore. So this is a very versatile target. I use it also for diagnostics when I call ball and dummy. So I have one person shooting and, I, and one person manipulating the gun. When I say manipulating the gun, they don't know if it's loaded or unloaded. And that way we can use this and we can figure out what the person is doing and I can give them a different target. We can check their groups. We can do a lot of different things. Great, simple target. 
works for bullseye shooters also. I know a lot of folks like these so they can work three separate bulls. I can do rifle here, I can do pistol. Works across the spectrum. Now, the most recent target I had built is this, what I call a surgical target. And the thought process, I started it as a sniper target. When I say sniper target, I can do my Cold Gun Zero data plate, I can cut this out, I can put it in my data book if it's in a document protector. So I can make sure that all my data right here is recorded. And then I start on the heads. When I start on the head, this is a 90 degree, which means her head is actually, there's a faint line you can't see right here. So it teaches you, when I shoot, if I shoot right here, it goes through his head, kills the hostage. Well, we want to, there's no tee box in life. You have to make a judgment call on your target's foreground and background. When I say target's foreground and background, if I shoot too far forward here, it goes through his head, hits her in the back of the head, kills her. So we're in charge of that bullet going to the body, leaving the body. So what we have to do is swag it a little bit and favor back here. So we'll let the bullet and the hydrostatic pressure do all its work. But again, we don't want to kill the hostage. Now, at 100 yards, we can say, is your gun accurate enough to make the shot? Is the ammo, are you, under cardio? If you can't make the shot, the real rule is don't pull the trigger. Then we take it, we do a full head, we do a three quarter, we do a half, and then we do a quarter head. Now, with the different heads here, if you can't make the shot, sniper wise, again, wait for that shot. Wait till it opens up, then you can make it. This will tell you, can your gun do it? Can your ammo do it? Is your cardio right? Can you do it? Now, we can do this also pistol. When I say pistol, we can run this and we can do one shot drills. One shot here, 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 all on a timer. I can use it because I use this in a house also for a shoot house. Well, we'll get to that in just a moment. Pistol, you know the hostage down to the left. Most right handed shooters pull down to the left. What this will do is teach you to lock your arm because if you pull down to the left, you'll hit your hostage. So what we want to do is make sure that your shooting position works across the spectrum. I lock right, lock left, and it's the same every time, first shot to last shot. When you get down here, it gets tight. If you can't make the shot in real life, don't pull the trigger. This could be a family member. You won't know it until you can do it on a flat range. The other thing is, this will tell you if you're bringing enough gun to the fight. When I say enough gun, will your little pocket gun make a headshot? If it won't, you got to think, reevaluate it. Is it the gun I want to bring? Or in real life, I've got to reposition to make the shot. Now, with this target here, I can use it rifle, I can use a pistol. If I do rifle, what happens is, I have to remember the line of sight, line of bore. If I aim here, it's got a two and a half inch offset, generally at seven yards. Now, I've got to remember where my offsets are, because a lot of times you'll aim right here and you'll hit low. So, it'll teach you line of sight, line of bore. You want to get a little tricky. What you can do is take this target, I fold it right here, and I turn it right and I turn it left. Why? If it's right and left in my offset, I have to hold on the hostage one time to hit the bad guy, and another time I have to hold in space to actually hit the bad guy. So it teaches you mechanical offset. What else can this be used for? Well, we talk about low light. Can I use this target low light? You bet. Can I use it? Uh, I can use MVGs, but low light or white light on this target at night with a sniper, headlights, or think about a rifle and a rifle light and then also a pistol and a pistol mounted light or a handheld trying to shoot this target here with your handheld position. It gets dicey. So but we want to replicate the, the positions on a flat range before we go into a tactical environment. So a lot of applications here on this target and, and again you don't want them to see it on the street before they see it on a flat range. So I appreciate it LA Targets. Thanks for manufacturing these for me. Keep up the good work. Pantio.